another element of the clarinet that is external and easy to see and will have a big effect on the playing, as technical playing especially, is hand position. Um, there's some really big things to watch for that are very common, and again, that you'll see for in students in fifth grade all the way up, unfortunately, into high school if it's, if it's not caught early on. And these things, uh, will, you know, if they can be corrected early on, will make playing the clarinet much easier. The, uh, some of the biggest things you want to encourage in your students is, will be to have uh, curved fingers. And the way they teach that is to have them drop one hand to the right side or left side and to relax the hand. If they bring the hand up and don't change anything, what you'll see is a light, a light curve, a kind of a, a half circle or a C shape where all the knuckles are curved. These knuckles, these knuckles, all the joints are curved and it's relaxed. And that's exactly what you want for the hand position. You want curved fingers and relaxation. Um, unfortunately, you don't usually get that. You usually get flattened out fingers, really tense, and pressing down because for some reason you think that if they press harder, the note won't come out. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, we're looking for curved fingers in both hands. So you can have them drop the left hand as well and bring that up and then place it on the clarinet. When you're looking at a clarinet is from straight ahead from the view that the camera is at now, you'll notice the fingers are at an angle. They're not like this. You might see this in some of your clarinetists, but what you want them to do, especially with the left hand, I'm going to focus on the left hand first because it tends to be the most problematic, is you want sort of an angled curve down with the fingers. The left hand should be, the, the first finger of the left hand should be anchored with this joint on the A key and with this knuckle here on the G sharp key. So that at all times, this first finger is in contact with the A key and the G sharp key. In fact, quite often I'll have students play an E and then also finger an E or a C and then make sure that they, they feel those two keys. Because, and that will fix a lot of hand position. If you can make sure that they are touching those two keys, that can correct a lot of things right there. The other thing to do to help correct left hand finger position is to take this pinky, which usually goes out here or back here, and to have them place it on the B key. If they anchor the first finger on these, the A and the G sharp key with those knuckles, and the pinky on the B key, these will probably fall into place right where they're supposed to be. Um, other times, if, if the pinky is especially a problem, or if when they're playing up here, they do this with the hands, again, very common, I'll have them play like C, D, E, F with the, the pinky on the B key. So they're not pressing the D key down, but they're resting the finger on the B key. And if you do that, it, it's not easy. It's a little bit tricky, but it won't allow this to come up here. It won't allow the pinky to raise up, and it won't allow this finger to come up and crunch together, which is very, very common. For some reason, the fingers want to all come together to play the note A, and that doesn't need to happen. And then, if that does happen, they're so far away from the other keys that it takes too long to get back. So with my very young students, I tell them, your fingers all have a home. They belong right here. This is where they live. And if they're out here and mom says it's time to come back for dinner, it's going to take them a whole lot of time to get back and they're going to be in trouble. The young ones understand that one. The older ones might not like that. But, you know, but the older ones just say it's just much more efficient. If you're out here and you need to get to this note, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You might as well stay this close, and then you just press down. It's, you know, it makes a lot of sense. But a big, you know, the habit that most students learn is they just they don't think about it, so their fingers are way out here. It's, for whatever reason, it's what naturally happens. So we have to, you know, remind them to keep the fingers very close. It's unlikely that they're going to be so close that they'll affect pitch. I mean, you have to get really close to those tone holes to significantly affect the pitch. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, Another problem with hand position that you'll find is the left hand wrist tends to come out here. Uh, but then you see what that does with the hand position. It flattens out this finger. This finger here that should be on the A and G sharp key can't touch it because that's there. Or sometimes they'll start here and then they go up when they play other notes. If you're seeing a lot of motion in the left hand wrist, then there are some hand position problems. They should be able to play the chromatic scale in the left hand without having significant motion in the left hand wrist. Doesn't need to move. You can have them think, you know, 
we don't shake our, typically shake hands with our left hand, but if you went to shake hands, the wrist sort of looks like this, and that's basically what it needs to look like when you're playing the clarinet. So if it's like that, there's a problem. Not many people go to shake hands like this. So I ask them, well, if you were to shake hands, how would your wrist look? And they'll do that, and that's pretty much what we want. Another thing that I use to teach hand position to students is I will have them put their fingers down on the clarinet, you know, fingering a C, and then hold the clarinet with that hand. And automatically the wrist is, some of it is somewhat corrected. Now you have a straight up and down thumb, which we do not want. You want a 45 degree angle thumb. So if at that point you say, okay, now make your thumb 45 degrees or at a 45 degree angle. Well, there you go. And that's pretty much the hand position that you have with the left hand. And you know, double check with them that this finger is in contact with the A and the G sharp. But that right there can help take care of the left hand you know, in, in theory. <laughs> when it comes, then they have to practice it a lot because again, those old habits will come back. 